Hi. Hey, welcome to Seoul Semiconductor at Display Week 2023 in LA. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Michel Zwanenberg. I'm uh, responsible for the display sales and marketing in Seoul Semiconductor and uh, happy to take you through this booth. And Seoul Semiconductor is Korean? Correct. We are a Korean company. We've been in business for about 30 years. Uh, our focus is making LEDs for display market and also other markets. Uh, but we uh, really focus on generating photons. All right. And here I see micro LED. Wake yeah. up. Wake up. Wake up. So what you see here is uh, <clears throat> indeed uh, Wake up pixel technology. This is a vertical RGB pixel. Um, traditionally, you see RGB pixels side by side. We make them on top of each other. Uh, each color is individually controllable, so we can create a full color spectrum, uh, full color images. What you see here is uh, two different displays, different brightnesses. Uh, these are 200 by 200 micron pixels, space at about 900 microns. So like this, you can do 163 inch 4K. Correct. If you just put a bunch of them together. Yes, correct. 4K, 163 inch. And this is high resolution, so 600 micron pixel uh, pitch, so it would be 108 inch 4K. Nice. And uh, a few cool more inch, you can do 8K. Yes. The cool thing about the vertical technology is that it allows you to, uh, actually it enables a very good color of angle. Uh, if you have side-by-side -side RGB displays, uh, often the color is different depending on which, from which side you view. Uh, with vertical uh, pixels like we have, you don't have that problem. All right. And what do we see here? So this is the same technology, just a, a bigger display. Uh, so it has a more impactful uh, image, of course. So this is a uh, 4K 163 inch uh, display, similar to the technology you saw there. So when you, to get 163 uh, three inch, you need four of these <coughs> or something, right? Correct. Yes. All right. So the, it, are there customers who actually use them already? Yeah, so actually this kind of technology is really interesting for the virtual production uh, market. So movie studios, they don't like to go uh, on location for uh, movie shoots. So they generate, they build these giant displays uh, in their studios to display the background. And the actors come in, uh, you know, they shoot the scenes yes. right there in the studio instead of going on location. And they put the right lighting and everything yeah, and correct. the color so yes. it looks like they're there. Yes, and especially in that environment, what I mentioned before about the color of angle is really critical because if they shoot from one angle versus the other angle, they want to have consistent color. Otherwise, post-production becomes really difficult. And I don't see the separation between each of the blocks. Correct. Yes. They're hard to see. Yes. We spend a lot of time maintaining the pitch going from one block to the next. And so that really comes down to uh, cutting those segments that are really accurate, uh, re really accurately. Nice. How soon do you think uh, <clears throat> this is on the market regular yet. consumers are going to have 163-inch uh, 4K at home? <laughs> How far are we? I, th I think it will be a few years from now. A few years? Yeah. It could still. be that you will supply into that? Uh, yeah, possibly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I think the resolution needs to go up to, to really make this um, interesting for home consumers. Also, the price points uh, are still a little bit higher. You need 8K. Then. Yes. All right. Yes. And 8K uh, smaller than, I don't know how many inches, but it's a lot of inches. Yes. Uh, so we, you need... We need a big reduction in size. Yeah. All still. right. How do you reach smaller size? Uh, smaller sizes, pixel size down. Uh, transition from PCB to glass uh, can help with that as well. Uh, but there's also, you know, a lot of technical things that need to be solved to enable that. All right, cool. And what do we see around here? So we move? have also uh, different um, technologies that are more focused on the, uh, let's say, IT space. So uh, monitors, uh, laptops, no uh, notebooks, uh, TVs. Uh, what you see here is uh, a preview of a um, LE solution that covers, uh, gives full DCI-P3 coverage. So it's 100% DCI-P3. Uh, so more uh, vivid colors uh, to deliver. So we're working on technology and we'll be releasing that in the near future. So this is kind of a sneak preview for, for our clients here. New I'm, not sure how familiar your, I'm not sure how familiar your, uh, your viewers are with DCI-P3. Uh, it's like the full color spectrum yes. of, of uh, 
like it's a spec for the colors, right? Correct, yes. So DCI-P3 is a, is a spec that defines how big the color gamut is that the display can cover. Uh, and so we're developing a technology that covers that full in, uh, fully. And that's good for a lot of um, you know, people like yourself, uh, people that create content and want to make sure they can see all the colors that they record. Yeah, I definitely, my next camera is going to be a 10-bit 422, all that stuff. And I guess that's perfect market. Yeah. HDR. Yeah. And, but so what the, is a, is it, what is the display? Uh, no, so it's an LED. We make LEDs. So we make devices that emit light, that help, that are part of the display solution. Um, so you could be making the backlight on it? Uh, we provide the LEDs that go into the backlight, yes. So for the mini LED market, for example? We have a solution there as well. You want right. me to show you that? Yeah. Let's go over there. And on the way, uh, you can maybe explain sure, all the stuff? Sure, sure. So um, this is a technology where we're working on creating a solution that removes the uh, QD sheet from a display. So you see here uh, mini LEDs, QD sheet to convert blue light into colors, and then the LCD panel. This is what uh, is used as a solution in most of the mini LED TVs today. What we're proposing is to actually take that phosphor, put it inside the LED, and so we're able to reduce the thickness even more, and also uh, reduce the system cost. So a lot of uh, TV makers in particular, consumers, want a lower cost TV, and by, uh, with this technology we able, enable that lower cost point. And do you achieve the same performance what the Quantum Dot guys are saying? So color-wise, that will be a trade-off, because Quantum Dots are not easy to integrate into an LED package. There is, uh, they're not, they cannot sustain the blue light uh, that well. So that's why uh, they separate the QD sheet from the, from the LEDs this way. And the quantum dot guys are talking about putting the quantum dots directly in the micro LEDs and yes. also OLED and stuff, right? Yes. And yes. are you involved in that kind of stuff? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. So um, the challenge with quantum, with quantum dots is really uh, how well do they handle blue light? Uh, and the LEDs, uh, all the LEDs that are used in our daily lives are based on a blue light, on a blue, blue LED with a yellow or multicolor phosphor to generate a white light. Uh, so that blue, uh, the blue photon power and quantum dots, that's a technical issue that needs to be resolved. Nice. Um, but this solution really uh, brings uh, cost reduction but also higher um, brightness to, let's say, automotive displays. Uh, automotive display market is growing rapidly. More and more uh, inches of display are in a car, and uh, this solution is a perfect fit for that uh, application. Um, what we see here is uh, what we call low blue light. Um, many of you spend a lot of time behind the screen, feel fatigued after working for many hours uh, behind the screen. That has to do with the fact that there's uh, a low wavelength blue light typically. Uh, if you reduce that content of low wavelength blue light, uh, the fatigue disappears. So a lot of monitor makers uh, are looking at increasing the wavelength of the blue to longer wavelengths to reduce that fatigue. Uh, if you don't do that without changing your phosphor recipe, uh, the display turns out yellow. Uh, it has a basically yellowish color. So what we're doing is we reformulate our phosphors and a chip combination, so we can still keep the colors very crisp. So this is a mistake, and this is the future. Correct. And what's happening here with the 2023, 24? So there is a push to get less and less of that uh, blue light, and and zero blue light is kind of the uh, the the holy grail, and we're pushing this envelope more and more every day. Um, so that's uh, more to come later. I don't like blue. I prefer red. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so so. But the the images, the sky, the water is still blue. But uh, so this what are you talking about? Another kind of blue. Uh, so blue, yeah. If you if you like, I said, a, a white LED is a blue LED plus a phosphor. And if you take away the phosphor, it's just blue light. And that blue light is what uh, our our brain doesn't like. Our eyes don't like. It gives the fatigue. Uh, so, 
shifting that blue wavelength to higher values reduces that uh, sensitivity of the of the brain and the eyes. Uh, but they need to reformulate a new phosphor to work well with that to maintain good colors in your in your display. So you can help all these nice people around the world to keep their eyesight. Longer yes, exactly. And don't damage it. This would be a problem if the display industry is harming people. I don't think it's harming necessarily. It's more about uh, making it easier to work with a display. And here it says world's first technology. Yes. No wire, no package, no yes. lens, yes. and high voltage. So our technology, uh, one of our key technologies is Wicop. Uh, Wicop is a brand name that is basically an LED without a package. So it's a chip that you can directly solder onto uh, a PCB and, and use it. And that's the key for our uh, mini LED technology. A, a narrow blue half width has less blue light fatigue. Interesting. It's just some live comments. Sure, uh, sure. The more efficient the blue light source, the better the color conversion on the quantum dot layer. What does that mean? Uh, Are you... The more efficient, can you uh, read the it more one efficient more time? The blue light mm -hmm. source, the better the color conversion when people use quantum dots. Uh, it, all, it all has to do with uh, how the quantum dot is tuned to the wavelength of the blue LED. So uh, quantum dot is a small particle that uh, you have to pump with the right wavelength uh, so it has to be tuned to each other. So it's it's like a marriage, you know. They both have to work well together. And mini LED with phosphor on the LED itself is impressive. Is that what you're doing? Ah, so that's the one that we showed there oh. before. Uh, so that's a, a, a an LED, but it's not a quantum dot. It's a regular phosphor. Uh, so bringing that to a quantum dot solution that would be really amazing. It seems very bright. Yeah. What's so happening what, here? What we're showing here is really just how a mini LED display works. Um, so we have two displays side by side, the same TVs, uh, one, without, uh, one without LCD, one with LCD, and we show a high contrast image so that people can clearly see how the mini LEDs are turning on and off, so the different segments. So you can see how this works live. It's a lot of light that goes into a TV. Yes. Is, uh, what's the brightness and nits on that one? Uh, so this would likely be... Uh, 2,000, 3,000, no, 5,000? No, 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 much less, much less. Like a 500 nit TV uh, mm. with a 4% transmission through the LCD panel. So people have to do math times 20-ish. Um, yeah, a few thousand nits of brightness from the backlight. 10,000 nits comes through, only 500 yes. exits the display. Yes. So LCD, that's a lot, it's LCD, very inefficient. Yeah, the LCD panel absorbs a lot of light. And. Are you talking about making that better now? <laughs> so what we're what we're doing for uh, mini LED solutions is we allow we're enabling thinner designs. So we've developed we've developed a method where we can uh, design the chip so we don't use any optics, but we have some um, let's say solid state optics on this chip to control the light output. And what we can do is we can tune the emission pattern together uh, to match it with the optical distance. Of the uh, of the backlight design, and there with that we have control over how many LEDs are used. So, customer wants lots of LEDs. Great, that's the easy part. But if they want to optimize for cost and efficiency, then we can help them tune the radiation pattern so they can uh, have more freedom in how many LED, LEDs they use. What is uh, showing here? So that's a uh, cutout where we where we show the blue LEDs. Uh, with a diffuser, uh, the uh, quantum dot sheet, and then another diffuser. All right. Just to show the inner workings of this. Is your company a world leader in this field? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we talk about, for example, uh, LCD displays, mm -hmm. you've been in many of them. Yes, yes. And we talk about the mini LED LCD displays. We have your supply. And we supply in all, the, in all the major brands that you can buy in the market, yes. All right. And um, is it a problem if some of the mini LEDs break or they're never going to break in the background? Because they, they don't it's, break. They don't, they just work. I, I would say other components break first. <laughs> there's no burn-in? Uh, for LEDs, no, not really. Of right. course, there's a, an LED has a certain brightness profile over life, but that's pretty consistent, pretty predictable. Uh, micro LED, some people say it needs to be in a certain size to be called a micro LED. 
um, I don't know. Sure. There's a whole bunch of different micro LEDs happening, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Are you going to be playing in the field of home use mass production micro LEDs? Absolutely. Yes. So, so you're ready, or you're going to? We will. Yes. Right. I can't say more. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. You're that, that was the whole booth. Okay. Yeah. That was cool. it. Okay. Thanks for Thanks making time. Just come see us. Cool. So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.